everybody! Welcome to Virtual Storytime at the Bartlesville Public Library. I'm Miss Hayden and we are going to do stories and songs. Viola's over there like normal. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna do what we normally do first. I think everybody remembers. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? How are you today? Hopefully everybody's good. It's a little chilly, so hopefully everybody's warm. We are going to start off with a story. And that story, oh, glare's a little bad, is The Lost Library. And it's by Jess McKeon. And I think they did both the drawings and the words. When Oliver moved to a new house, he had to leave lots of things behind, but at least he had his books. He could escape to different worlds with the turn of a page. Oop. Oliver knew all about books, but even he was surprised to find one fluttering behind his bedroom closet. It must have been left behind, thought Oliver. He would have loved to keep it, but it, but it belonged somewhere else. Where was the lost library? Surely someone must know, thought Oliver, but everyone was too busy or too sleepy to pay any attention. Everyone except for Rosie, his new neighbor. I know someone who might be able to help, she said with a smile. Oliver and Rosie walked quietly to the front desk. The fluttering book closed its covers and dropped into Oliver's hand. We can ask the librarian, said Rosie, but Oliver had a better idea. He gently slipped the book into the return slot. No sooner had it disappeared than the floor beneath them gave, oh, gave way. They hurtled down and down and down. They landed with a soft thud. Books of every shape and size filled the shelves around them. I think we're trapped, whispered Oliver. How exciting, replied Rosie. At least we found the lost library, said Rosie cheerfully. Oliver sighed. But now we're the ones who are lost. They made their way past books about pirates and Peru, toucans and tennis. And when they got to books about boats, they began to row. As they sailed past books about storms, Oliver felt nervous. I'm not a very good swimmer, he said, but his words were lost to the wind. Luckily, just within reach, Rosie found a book to help. Oliver read how to knot a bowline and hoist the main sail, and Rosie sailed them safely to shore. As they walked, they found themselves surrounded by trees. 
just a few at first, then more and more until a forest of books towered above. Let's go right, said Rosie. I think left, replied Oliver. But in the end, it didn't matter. There was no path to follow. We'll never find our way out, Oliver said. But just as he was losing hope, Rosie found another book to help. We need to stay calm and stick together, she said. Slowly, the forest began to thin. And there, at last, at the top of a tall bookshelf, Oliver spied the way out. But the bookshelf had spied them too, for this was no ordinary bookshelf. This was a bookshelf dragon. Watch out, Oliver, called Rosie. The dragon snapped and snarled. It didn't like being woken up at all. Oliver was sure he was about to be eaten, and there was no book to help with that. But there was a Rosie, for Rosie had calmly sat down and, be and begun to write a read aloud. If there's one thing everyone likes, it's being read to. Oliver and Rosie climbed quietly up the dragon's back, careful not to wake it. Oh, sorry, I skipped a line. Slowly, the bookshelf dragon drifted off to sleep. Oliver and Rosie climbed quietly up the dragon's back, careful not to wake it. As they passed the librarian, Oliver paused. Excuse me, have you ever heard of a bookshelf dragon, he asked. Miss Hardback gave him a knowing smile. That's a story for another day. Oliver and Rosie loved reading together. They could visit different worlds with the turn of a page, and they always kept an eye out for lost books, just in case. That's the end of Lost Library. Ooh, Claire's really bad with this one. Okay, time for, you guessed it, songs. Okay, so, does everybody remember what song we start with? I would be very surprised if you didn't. It starts with Twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Time for you to sing without me. <laughs> sleeping. It's a little chilly, so some of you might still want to be hiding in bed. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping, Brother John? Brother John? Morning bells are ringing. Morning bells are ringing. Ding, ding, dong. Ding, ding, dong. 
realized I still had my keys on. Whoops. Okay. You guys sing. Chomp, chomp, chomp. It's the best. Ever since I was a teeny tiny baby crocodile, it's been my favorite. Chomp, slurp, chomp. I like it for breakfast. I like it for lunch. I like a big salty slab for dinner. And I love it for dessert. I love watermelon. Gulp. I just swallowed a seed. I swallowed a seed. It's growing in my guts. Soon vines will come out of my ears. My stomach will stretch. My skin will turn pink. I don't want to be in a fruit salad. Somebody please help me.
Oh no, I can feel it growing inside me. It's happening right now. My stomach feels funny. Burp. Oh, here's the seed. That was too close. No more melon for me. Never again. Well, maybe just a teeny tiny bite. Chomp, chomp. Chomp. was the watermelon seed and our first book was the lost library well thank you very much for joining me today we do um, the this virtual story time weekly Mondays at 11 and then we actually do um, four in-person story times um, those are Wednesday and Thursdays both days 10 and 11 and those are across the building in the story time room. And Miss Laura does those. So we hope to see you guys in the building. Have a good day. Bye. Actually, I should say, and good week. <laughs>